tell you what, I'm really worked up today. Really ticked. President Zelensky of Ukraine met with Pope Francis and gave him a gift. It's an icon of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with a blacked out silhouette of our Lord and Savior, the eternal Logos, King of the Jews, Jesus Christ. Look at this. This is what President Zelensky gave to the Pope. This is a picture of the icon. A, let's just look at let's just look at the Blessed Mother and how she's depicted here. It's not flattering. It's not good. This is not quality. I'm offended by it. And then let's focus on, of course, Our Lady says to us, do whatever he wills. Our Lady is the shortest, safest, fastest way to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Jesus is blacked out. He's gone. This is highly offensive to the Pope. This is highly offensive to all Catholics. It's highly offensive to all Christians. Zelensky is Jewish. And this is a to the followers of Jesus Christ. Now, I know Zelensky, when he met with Pope Francis, here it is. Oh, by the way, Zelensky's wearing a sweatsuit to meet the Pope. Hey, Pope Francis, uh, yeah, I'm just rocking my, my sweats like I rolled out of bed. Completely disrespectful. Compl I know this is, his, this is his, his vibe. You know, he likes to roll in the sweats. He says to Pope Francis, well, the reason that Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings is blacked out is because that signifies all the Ukrainian children. That's highly offensive to Christians. Yes, Zelensky of Ukraine, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said, let the little ones come unto me. He said, you must become like unto a child in order to enter into the kingdom of God. He also says things like, when you feed the hungry and give drink to the thirsty and clothe the naked and visit the imprisoned, you're doing all those things to me. So we know that our Lord Jesus Christ identifies himself with the little ones in the kingdom of God, and that when we do acts of charity, as in assisting children, Ukrainian children, Nigerian children, Mexican children, American children, we are doing those things unto Jesus Christ. That is Christian theology. That is basic New Testament 101. What is blasphemous and sacrilegious is modifying, modifying the canons of Christian iconography. These images, this image, by the way, goes back to an icon that we, tr we Catholics believe was painted by St. Luke. There are many editions of it. It's hard to know if the real one still exists. You can't just as a Jewish person come in and black out baby Jesus and give it as a gift to the Pope, Supreme Pontiff, Vicar of Christ, reputed to be the pastor of pastors and the servant of servants of all Christians. Here he is, look. I'm sure the Pope was like, what in the world? What in the world are you doing? I'm trying to think of an analogy that if a Christian did this to a Jewish person, everyone would just lose their top. Like, what is the equivalent? Maybe if you're in the live chat or in the comments. What is it the equivalent where you would present a religious icon to the Pope in Rome in which you black out the founder of the church and of the one true faith? And you're like, this would be a good idea to give this to the Pope while I'm just chilling here in my sweatsuit. By the way, here's how real icons look. This is gorgeous. This is truly beautiful. I don't know the full history on it. I believe it does have, I always thought it kind of had a Slavonic background, but I see the Greek on there, Mater Theu, and then Jesus Christus. Jesus Christos, pardon me. And then Ho'on in Greek, 
he who is, he who is being around the halo of our Lord Jesus Christ, even as a child, he is, he who is, I am who I am, the eternal Logos, eternally generated from God the Father, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, light from light, God from God, true light from true light, co-eternal, just beautiful. Here's a, here's a Ukrainian icon right here. I believe this is Ukrainian. This is, this is what we Catholics believe in, Zelensky. And get your nasty mitts off of our iconic tradition. Absolutely shameful. We got to call it out. I am so sick of this Zelensky trotting around the world asking for all of our tax money to run a proxy war with no end in sight. This is basically a proxy war with NATO and Russia. All right, I'm going to do some Q&A. What do you guys think? I'll tell you what, if I was the president of the United States and Zelensky gave me that, I mean, it'd, it'd be bad news. I, I would lose it. I would totally lose it if that happened. And I would rebuke him in front of the whole world. How dare you? Black out Jesus with a diplomatic gift, especially to the Pope. Come on. I want to hear what you all think on this Zelensky. If you're new, like the video. Glad to have you here. And then also please consider subscribing, hit the bell, thumbs up, etc. Okay, we're going to jump into some Q&A and some comments from those of you that are in the live chat. What do you guys think of this blacked out, Jesus. Pope should have an iconographer paint a child Jesus in the blacked out portion. I agree. I agree. What do y'all think? Let me ask you this too. Do you think President Zelensky is mocking Christians? Was this an innocent mistake? Was like, I know, let's take one of the most holy icons that are revered by Christians and let's black out Jesus on it and give it to the Pope. That would be awesome. Christians are going to like that, and it's going to really mean a lot to the Pope. Or was this sort of a, <laughs> this is going to be epic when I drop this. Talk about trolling the Catholic Church. When did this happen, people are asking? I pull up the article. It uh, looks like May 17th. That's today. Of course, they're much earlier than we are in Rome from here in America. According to Italian journalists, locals have the impression that the negotiations between the Pope and Zelensky were extremely fruitless and tense. What is the statement of the president of Ukraine that he does not need mediators for negotiations with Moscow? Earlier, it became known that during the, a meeting with the Pope, the president of Ukraine grossly violated several important rules of etiquette. He did not let the pontiff go ahead and did not put on a suit but a sweater. Absolutely disgraceful. Completely disgraceful. I'm embarrassed for him. I'm really embarrassed for him. Going back into your comments now. For those of you that are just joining us, by the way, Zelensky met with Pope Francis. He gave him this icon of the Theotokos, the Blessed Virgin Mary, holding baby Jesus, except when you look close, Baby Jesus is blacked out. Our Lord and Savior is gone. There's a silhouette there. He's missing. And Zelensky says, this symbolizes all the Ukrainian children. Well, don't black out Jesus to prove your political point in your stump speech to get money from the world. It's disgraceful. And you showed up wearing a track suit or a sweat shirt. And it's disrespectful. This is what we believe in. This is what we own as Catholics. All right, comments, questions, I want to hear from y'all. Shannon says, why would you expect anything different? Won't let Christians in his own country worship. I don't understand why the whole world's liking this guy. And yes, I'm not going to pretend, I know it's politically incorrect to talk about these things, but I'm not, I'm not going to pretend that we don't know. Zelensky 
is not Eastern Orthodox. He's not Ukrainian Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox. He's not Roman Catholic. He is Jewish. He's giving a, it's like, I'm trying to think of a good analogy here. It's like, uh, I go to a um, bar mitzvah and I give the child a, uh, a, uh, a plaque of a Bible verse in Hebrew, but over certain words, I take a marker, a, a Sharpie marker, and I just Sharpie all over it, and then I give it to him. I'm like, happy bar mitzvah. I'm like, well, what, what is this? Like, oh, it's a piece of the Torah. I got a piece of the Torah, and I Sharpied all over it. That's offensive. All right, that's offensive. Why would Zelensky, a Jewish person, basically take a Sharpie to the iconic tradition of, of Catholics. Like it has to be called out. I know someone somewhere in the world is going to call me anti-Semitic, but it's not. It's anti, this is anti-Christian and we're just calling out that which is anti-Christian. If you black out baby Jesus on an icon, that's anti-Christian. And you should be called out for that. You should be held accountable for that, Mr. Sweater Man, Mr. Sweatshirt. Zelensky, we're not just going to sit here and be quiet. JT says, I think that icon should be burned with frankincense along with Pachamama and St. Peter's presence. Dave says he's laughing with his friends about all of this right now. I suspect that. He's like, can you believe we just trolled the Pope? Huh, huh. Rita says, he's a puppet. He's told what to do. It is all scripted. He was an actor. It's true. Zelensky was an actor on TV. He's a professional actor. Going back into your comments and your question. Alexander says, Taylor, don't. Don't you think he could also mean by this icon that Jesus doesn't seem to be around because his people are suffering? It's mockery. I don't know what it means. I know it's mockery. I know it's sacrilege. And I know it's offensive. And I think all Catholics, all Catholics should say, Zelensky, you got to apologize. You got you to gotta say you did wrong. We don't accept that. You can't come over to us, beg us for money, and then spit on an icon of Jesus. You can't do that. Not allowed. Definitely not allowed. Um, someone said, did Pope Francis say anything? I don't know. I don't know. I've seen reports saying that Pope Francis was offended, but I haven't seen any text of what the Pope said. Um, Italian journalists did say that the discussions were ten tense and fruitless. Um, so there you go. For those of you just joining us, Pope Francis met with Zelensky, President Zelensky of the Ukraine. He gave him this icon, and it's not a very well done icon. It looks cheap. It's not a beautiful picture of Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin. And when you look really close, baby Jesus is blacked out, gone. Look at the art there. It's not good art. You know, this is not, I mean, I, I have seen teenage iconographers who make art that's like 30 times better than this. You know, stuff that looks beautiful, that captures the heart, that draws you to heaven, opens your heart to Jesus and Mary, leads you into holy thoughts, purity, grace, faith, hope, charity. That's This is what we want right here. This, just compare them. This was painted by someone who loves God, the good, the true, and the beautiful. This was produced by Zelensky. It's ugly. It's blasphemous. It's sacrilege. It's not good. It's not true. It's not beautiful. And you can't black out Jesus, Zelensky, to make a political point about Ukrainian children. And yes, we do love Ukrainian children and we don't want Ukrainian children to die and we want to end the war and we want peace 
and we want no Ukrainian children or any Ukrainians to suffer. That doesn't mean you get to black out baby Jesus on an icon. Facts are facts. Sacrilege is sacrilege. Zelensky needs to apologize, and the Pope needs, I'm thinking that's supposed to be to give him an exorcism. Agreed and agreed. This person says, Bev, Zelensky is not a good person. He doesn't care about the people in Ukraine. He's in it with all the other adversaries on the government. People feel sorry for him. Not a good thing. He is in with the Biden regime that is crooked. People, you know, I started saying some of these things like, what's going on? You know, what's the real story here? And it just seems that this is a proxy war that is set up by the world leaders to get money. It's a money-making scheme. It's a grift war. And people are dying over it. Like, people are really dying. Children are really suffering. It's horrible. And by the way, I don't want anybody coming in, well, you're, you're, you're pro-Putin, you're pro... I'm not pro-Putin, I'm not pro-Zelensky. I'm pro-peace. And I don't think America and all these, all these other nations need to be propelling us into World War III by having proxy wars in Eastern Europe. It's not our place. And all this could have been prevented with, dip with diplomatic relations and rational minds. The problem is, is we have a president who doesn't know how to do that. Back into your comments. Vita, he's destroying Ukrainian churches every day. A moral showman who danced in heels. He's not hiding his hate anymore. Agreed. I think he's just trolling us. I think this right here, he's just like, hey, I'm trolling you. I'm laughing in your face, you Christians. What are you going to do about it? I'm kind of wondering what Ukrainian people. Here's, here's Campbell. He says, I can tell you that Ukrainian people are very religious. The Ukrainian Catholics are very devout, and the Ca uh, Ukrainian Orthodox are very religious. What does this say to his own people, Zelensky, who are Christians, to the Catholic and Orthodox? He gives this as a gift. That's a slap in the face to the Pope. It's a slap in the face to Catholics, but it's a slap in the face to his people. To He is Jewish. The majority of his people are Christian, and they have great love for the mother of God, the Theotokos, and the Christ child. He's offending his own people. This whole thing is out of control. Back into your comments. Dory says, I am personally offended as well, as am I. It's scandalous. It's wrong. Going back into your comments. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of comments here about diplomacy and how this was me this whole thing was messed up. I mean, I, I don't want to get into the whole thing about the war, but this whole thing could have been avoided easily. And what happened is, is we got into a position of weakness in America. We got into a position of greed, of money laundering, of proxy war. And that's what we have right now. And it's a huge mess. And it's, it's I, I feel bad for the Ukrainian people because I feel that they're being used their home is being used as a battleground for these people. To Zelensky, everything is theater. He's a fraud, a mocker. You know, it used to be that to say these things was controversial, but I think people are waking up and they're realizing something is wrong in the state of the Ukraine. There's deep corruption, deep, deep problems. If you're liking this uh, video, this podcast, by the way, please hit like. Please subscribe. If you're listening on Spotify, subscribe. If you're listening on iTunes, subscribe. Listen on Rumble, subscribe. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, please subscribe. I'm coming up on a thousand episodes. A thousand episodes. This is like 990 something. 
So please do subscribe. I appreciate that. And then all of you that make this possible are the Patreon subscribers. And I want to thank you for all that you do. You make this possible for me. I live a very, uh, I'm a very privileged person that I'm able to talk on YouTube, on a webcam, write books, do commentary. And that's largely because people support my work. So if you want to support, get some signed books, I'll send you a rosary, get involved, go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. There's different levels there. I'll sign these books and, uh, put in a rosary, depending on the level, there's all different levels. And my wife, Joy, in the room next door, puts all these together. I sign them while we have lunch together and we mail them to you. It's a mom and pop shop. So go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall and please support what I'm doing. All right. A couple more comments and questions here on Zelensky. A lot of people in the comments are also asking me about me running for president. I am planning to run for president. I am meeting with clergy, lawyers, advisors, and creating a feasibility plan and exploring what that will look like in the months to come as we move into 2024. As you know, this is a big concern that I've had for many years. As you know, the conservative values of America have been shifting and sliding increasingly to the left. It's no longer a given when you're talking to conservative politicians that they believe that matrimony is one man and one woman till death do his part. It's no longer assumed in conservative, even Christian circles, po political, that abortion is a murder, that it ends a human life. And therefore, human life should be protected from conception all the way through birth. See, these are basic natural law premises that I believe with all my heart, and I have many other convictions. That's why we're, we're hammering out the platform, trying to make it as clear, as reasonable as possible. And I'll be releasing that in weeks to come. So stay tuned. Make sure you are subscribed. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be big. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be huge. So make sure you're subscribed. But yeah, I'm running, I'm looking into preparing, looking into the filing of paperwork, preparing a strategy, a, a path of feasibility to raise the questions on, you know, how come Hungary has a pro-family policy? I've been reading it. I've been studying it. What Viktor Orban done is, is miraculous. It's beautiful. We in America should be doing exactly what Orban's doing in Hungary to promote matrimony, chastity, the procreation of children in wedlock with nuclear families. We need to start talking about these things. We need to talk about certain dangers, moral dangers in our society, like pornography, debt. These are all concepts that you can read about in the book of Proverbs, in the Bible. People used to be not only conversant, but also fluent in these moral topics. And today, people have lost that. So what if I run for president? And what if, even if I don't win, but in some way, we can shift the Overton window. We can shift the dialogue more towards Christ the King. We can put the focus on Jesus. Clearly, the focus is not on Jesus here. Zelensky, and in a way, this icon is an icon of everything wrong in global politics. Some of it looks like Christianity, but Jesus is blacked out. Certainly the case in America right now where we have a Catholic president. Some people hear that I want to run for president. They say, well, but he's so Catholic, and that's never what. Well, well, don't you have a Catholic president right now? Well, yeah, but he's not really Catholic. Ah, gotcha. Gotcha. Busted. What if we, what if we held up the highest standard and said, you know what? We do want to live for Christ the King politically. That's what I believe in. Yeah, but it might fail. No one will go for it. Well, why don't we try it? 
Why don't we just try? If we try and we fail, so be it. Maybe we all go get martyred. I don't know. But it's worth a try. It's worth a try. Our government is broken. Some people even say out loud, I mean, is the Constitution even in place right now? People ask these questions, right? And that's because we are in a moral chaos. We don't know what is good. We don't know what is right. I mean, many of us do. But the culture is no longer oriented towards the good, the common good. That's a problem. And we can continue to play the game every two years and every four years well, this is the least evil candidate. We've talked about this. I've talked about this all the time on the Dr. Taylor Marshall podcast. It's the lesser of two evils, so let's go for that. Okay, well, what if we just said, all right, pause that for a moment. Let's take the platonic form, the ideal, the best of what we would want. Let's go for it. Let's try it and see what happens. The worst thing that could happen if we did that is it wouldn't work. If it's me, I wouldn't get elected. If it's someone else, he wouldn't get elected. But it may be in our time, the conversation, which is here, maybe moves five degrees to here. And then it's moved to here and to here and to here until here we begin, we begin to get something closer to it. You say, that'll never happen. That's so dumb. That's so naive. Well, I mean, look at the first four centuries of Christians. Something happened. The window did move decade by decade until finally you had an emperor who said, hmm, let's give these Christians a chance. Edict of toleration. He was baptized on his deathbed. And his, he had a son, Constantius, he was an Arian, there's all kinds of problems. But within a few hundred years, you start to see Christendom blossom, rise up. People had to work for that, you know? That was the Holy Ghost working through people. Popes, bishops, priests, deacons, monastics, but also laymen who worked and carried burdens for these things to happen, for this Christendom to blossom. Yeah, we live in a post-Christian, even an anti-Christian time. But maybe we can work together. Maybe we can stop fighting each other, calling each other names, dividing over all these tiny minutiae. Maybe we can come together, we can unite, and we can build something beautiful. Maybe we can stop saying, well, I just want to get the lesser of two evils every two to four years. I mean, are you tired of that? I'm tired of that. Catholic voters in America, I know not everybody watching is America, an American, but Catholic voters in America, I think there's 17% of the registered voters. It's not a majority. But what if, what if every single American who believes in this statement, I believe that matrimony is one man, one woman until death do us part. If I could get every American who believes that to vote for me, I would probably be the president. What if we got everyone who believes that boys are boys and girls are girls and women are women and men are men without a bunch of sociologists getting in there with their textbooks? If I could get everybody who believes that to vote for me, I would be president. I would win the primary. And yet we hear politicians not wanting to be solid and firm on some of these issues. And yet there are millions and millions and millions of Americans and millions and millions of people all over the world who are desperate to hear people say those words. Murder is murder. Men are men. Women are women. Matrimony is between one man and one woman. I mean, these are basic fundamental principles that you get within reading the first six chapters of Genesis. So do you agree? 
I'm going to be talking more about it. Like I said, I'm trying to be careful. I'm trying to get people who I can trust and get counsel from, clergy, lawyers. But if you want to learn more, you can go to my website, taylormarshall.com. And there's a, right at the top of the page, you can share your email with me and I'll send, as I get things together, I'll be sending that out to those people first because those people are buying in, right? They're like, I want to learn more. If you're one of those people who want to learn more, taylormarshall.com, put in your email. I'm not going to share it. I'm not going to sell it. I'm not going to give it to a politician or anything like that. It's strictly for me to communicate this stuff to you. I trust, trust me. All right, I'm not going to sell it. I'm not going to share it. But share, share your email with me. And uh, I'll, I'll send you some materials about this Christ the King platform. I think it'll be 12 points. It'll be just a simple 12 bullet points. And let's give it a shot. Let's give it a try. If you like that, please like the video. If you want to get more, I'll be talking about it, of course, here on YouTube. You can go to YouTube and subscribe. Hit the bell. You can listen on Rumble iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, all the audio podcasts, it'll all be there as well. All right, well, we we started off talking about Zelensky in this in the sacrilege. It's uh it's horrendous, it's horrible. Um you can't come into the world and say I'm going to bring about peace when you black out the prince of peace in an icon that you give to the pope. It's just totally sacrilegious. It's wicked, and this is what God deserves, the beauty of holiness. Christ the King. Christ from the very, well, Christ was the King from all eternity, but even in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Ark of the New Covenant, he was King. He was born a King. He died a King. He rose again on the third day a King. He ascended as a King. He is a King right now. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We should honor him as King of King and Lord of Lords. We should honor him. Our political leaders should honor him. In Poland, they honor Christ. They honor Mary. We should do that. I know it's shocking to hear people say, American politicians should publicly publicly honor Christ. Yes, they should. They should begin, they they could begin their speeches with the Hail Mary. I would, if I were president. That's who I am. That's my belief. I'm not, we shouldn't be doing the JFK thing where like, well, I'm a Catholic, but I'll bracket all my Catholicism. I'll put it over there, and then I'll just be this neutral person on the podium. That doesn't work. There is no neutral podium. There is no neutral public square. You know what happens when you say, oh, there's a neutral public square where there is no religion? It's infested with secular humanism and a bunch of people dressed up with wigs and too much makeup, reading books to little kids. That's what's happened. That's the problem. All right, let's pray the Our Father together. Oremus nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater noster, qui es in celi, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tuas, cut in cello et in terra, panam nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, Sicut et nos dimittimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libera nos a malo. Amen. Nomini Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Friends, thanks for watching. If you want to learn more, go to taylormarshall.com. That's my website. And let's pray for Zelensky and his conversion to Jesus Christ. Pray, pray for Pope Francis. Pray for the Ukraine, for the Russians, for everyone. We need peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And he said, you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless and Godspeed.